Hello, welcome to a two-part Sparks 1524 looking at the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park. I'm Nathaniel Miller coming to you from scenic, sunny, and stunningly satisfying Niceville, Florida. USS Alabama was donated to the state of Alabama in 1964 to become a museum ship. The ship and Battleship Memorial Park opened in 1965. For the first few years, the Alabama was a lonely sentinel guarding Mobile Bay. However, in 1969, she was joined by the submarine USS Drum. The park was off and running. As you drive east or west along Interstate 10, you'll clearly see the Alabama guarding the entrance to the bay as you zip along. However, if you take some time to drive and over and visit the park, you'll discover that this naval history park has grown to include something for almost everyone. For a park centered on naval history, it has artifacts from the Air Force, the Coast Guard, and the U.S. Army, as well as the Navy and Marine Corps. When you drive into the park, the first thing you'll notice, of course, is the Alabama herself and the submarine USS Drum, now in permanent dry dock. But if you look in the shadow of the Alabama, you will see several tanks and artillery pieces. Once you enter the aircraft pavilion, where you'll also buy your admission tickets, you'll be surrounded by a plethora of planes permanently proclaiming aviation history. You'll be able to see aircraft such as a Vought OS-2U Kingfisher float plane. You'll also see an AD-4 Sky Raider. Now this was a piston-powered aircraft built for World War II. It came online, however, after the war ended. This aircraft was so powerful, though, it held its own into the jet age, serving in the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps until the 1970s. Once you've completed your tour of the Aviation Pavilion, I recommend you start by going to the USS Drum. The oldest Gato-class submarine still in existence, the Drum was commissioned one month before the attack on Pearl Harbor. It's a little known fact, but the submarines were our only line of defense for several months following that attack until our surface forces were rebuilt. The Drum herself is the eighth highest scoring submarine of the U.S. fleet during the war. She sank over 80,580 tons of enemy shipping. She also brought home all of her sailors on her 13 war patrols. Once you've examined the Drum's external features, climb the ladder and head aboard. You'll enter the ship through her forward torpedo room, perhaps one of the most famous rooms on any submarine. The museum staff and the volunteers work very hard to keep the drum ship shape. The bright work is all gleaming, and it's not too hard to imagine a few sailors standing at attention in their dress whites, waiting for an admiral to conduct an inspection. Of course, one of the things most people remark about submarines, especially the World War II submarines, is how cramped they are. These boats were not built for space or comfort, they were built to seek out an enemy. They did this by hiding underwater during the day and running on the surface at night. By day, the men would be breathing air that was increasingly stale while the boat ran on batteries. Once the night fell, however, the boat could surface, refresh its air, and use its diesel engines to run across the water while charging her batteries. While you're in the drum, you'll be able to tour the control room where the ship was piloted, and you'll notice there are several control wheels. The drum and other submarines like her are not piloted by a single sailor, but by a team of sailors working together to move the boat in the three dimensions she operated in when underwater. You'll have a chance to tour the engine room and see the diesel engines that powered the boat while she was running on the surface. Finally, you'll enter the aft torpedo room. Take a look around once again and notice the bunks, or the racks as we see in the Navy, that are held up in storage against the bulkheads. At night, these would be lowered and the sailors would sleep on them. Right above the torpedoes, they were ready to fire at the enemy. Part two of this will take you aboard the mighty Alabama herself last of the South Dakota class and one of the most famous museum ships in the United States today. Hello, welcome to part two of the Sparks 1524 look at the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park. I'm Nathaniel Miller coming to you from fabulously fun and family friendly Niceville, Florida. As you drive east or west on Interstate 10, you will see the battleship USS Alabama guarding the entrance to Mobile Bay. A museum ship since 1964, the Alabama served during World War II. Commissioned in 1942 during the dark days of, or during the early dark days of the war, excuse me, the ship's life actually began before that. Now, if you visited one of the later battleships we built, such as the USS Wisconsin on display in Norfolk, Virginia, and then visit the USS Alabama, you'll notice the Alabama seems rather short and stumpy compared to the later USS Wisconsin. The South Dakota class was designed in the 1930s under the restrictions of the Washington Naval Treaty. In order to build a battleship that had the right guns and armor to realistically go up against an enemy battleship, but maintain weight class as required by the treaty, the South Dakota class clocked in at only 660 feet long. Once the Iowa class was laid down, 
that treaty restriction no longer mattered, and so the Iowa class come in at over 800 feet. The Alabama first served in the Atlantic from 1942 until 1943, working with the British and other Allied forces. In 1943, the ship sailed to the Pacific, where she participated in every major Pacific campaign through the end of the war. Once you board the battleship, you'll be coming up right next to the number three gun turret. The Alabama sports nine 16-inch 45 caliber guns. These guns could fire a shell that weighed over 2,000 pounds over 23 miles. If you head to the forward end of the Alabama on her weather deck, you'll see you can actually climb into the number one gun turret. Once inside, you'll discover that despite the fact this turret is a very big object on deck, there is very little space inside. Once you're ready to go below decks, the crew, uh, or excuse me, the museum staff and volunteers have laid out several color-coded tours that are all self-guided and will let you explore the battleship in varying degrees of detail. As you tour the Alabama's engine rooms, you'll hear the roar of machinery. This isn't some ghostly encounter with the spirits of the long dead, nor is it a science fiction time warp snapping you back to the dark days of World War II. This is a recording the museum staff and volunteers have set up to allow visitors to get a better idea of conditions for the sailors working in these spaces. Having been stationed aboard one of the last traditionally steam-powered ships in the U.S. Navy myself, the amphibious assault ship USS Ponce, I spent many hours in her engine rooms photographing her crew since I was the media specialist. I can testify that the sound and volume are completely accurate. This is the sound of a battleship's engine room. Another point of interest below decks is the chance to enter the barbettes. Now the barbettes are the giant tubes that support the guns up on the deck. The barbettes house the machinery that turned those giant turrets and also the machinery that brought the shells and the powder topside. As you continue exploring the maze of passageways inside Alabama's hull, you'll find exhibits dedicated to many different subjects. One room tells the story of U.S. Navy divers. Another tells the story of the destroyer USS Evans, which survived four kamikaze hits in 1945. You'll tour the spaces that house the United States Marines who were attached to the ship. The galley and the mess decks where the crew ate. Be sure to look for the battleship's soda fountain and the two ice cream machines. Ice cream machines are invaluable on ships even today, trust me on this, but in World War II they enabled that ship to trade for anything the crew wanted. As I said earlier, the Alabama served from 1942 through 1945 in the Atlantic and in the Pacific. She brought home all of her sailors. She never took a hit and none of her men were killed. She got the nickname the Lucky A. In fact, the Alabama helped lead the U.S. fleet into Tokyo Bay for the surrender of the Japanese forces in late 1945. If you're interested in visiting the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park, I have linked their website in the description below. Please check them out. There is a whole lot there to learn, to see, and to do. Also, if you're interested in reading more about my adventures, part two of my column on my recent visit to the park is also linked below. As always, if you find this video interesting, please hit the like button and feel free to share it. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, have a great Navy day, and remember to go and do great things.